This video was made possible by Dashlane. Manage your online security for free at dashlane.com slash RLL. So here's a question for you. What's the quickest way that you think you could earn $100 million in? If you're an average American employee earning roughly $45,000 a year, it'll take you 2,244 years before you can make your 100 million. Or you could be Jeff Bezos and earn that much money about every 11 hours that you exist. But if you don't have a huge company behind you to help you make that much money, maybe you could earn that much in just one night the same way that Leonardo Nordarbartolo and his gang did. You rob one of the most securely fortified places in the world like you're in a movie and make off with over a hundred million dollars in diamonds. Although to be fair, you may end up in jail for a long time if you get caught afterwards like he did. So just listen and remember that stealing is bad. The location that the crime took place in was right here, a small three block sized area in downtown Antwerp in Belgium known as the Antwerp Diamond District. Back in 2003 when the crime took place, three billion dollars of diamond sales were made in just this tiny area, and over 80% of all the world's rough diamonds will pass through here. It's one of the densest concentrations of wealth anywhere in the world, and that wealth is very securely guarded. The district has its own dedicated police force provided by the Belgian government. There are six 63 video cameras providing 24-hour video surveillance in the entire perimeter can be shut off with steel cylinders that'll block any vehicles from getting in or from leaving. Inside of the center of all of this already impressive security is a large building called the Diamond Center, where a large portion of the district's diamond merchants work. Merchants rent out stores and offices inside of the building and also rent out safe deposit boxes inside of the building's vault. And it's inside of this vault where hundreds of millions of dollars worth of valuables are stashed. But getting inside is obviously impossible, right? Because it has 10 layers of security that any crazy thief would have to somehow get through. First of all, the vault is located two stories underground beneath the building. There's an external security camera outside of the door that's recording 24 hours a day, a combination dial on the door with over 100 million different possible combinations, a key lock with a very specific key that you need to insert, a three-ton solid steel door rated to withstand over 12 hours of continuous drilling, but that wouldn't matter anyway, because it also has a seismic sensor inside of it that would trigger an alarm the moment that it detected a drill's vibration. If the door is somehow opened, there are two metal plates on the door and the wall that create a magnetic field. But if the door gets opened, that magnetic field will break, which triggers another alarm. Then there's a steel grate behind that door that requires another key to open. Once you get past all of this, you're inside, but now there's even more problems. There's an internal security camera that's also recording 24 hours a day, a light sensor that'll trigger an alarm if it detects any light, like people turning on the switches or using flashlights, and finally, a heat and motion camera that'll trigger another alarm if it detects motion and a raise in the vault's temperature from somebody's body heat being inside of it. But none of this deterred Notar Bartolo from allegedly planning what has been called the greatest heist of the 21st century, and this is how something impossible to break into was, well, broken into with supplies that you could basically get at Walmart. Beginning in 2000, three years before the heist would take place, Notar Bartolo began renting an office inside of the Diamond Center to blend in and gain everybody's trust there. He posed as an Italian diamond merchant, made friends, and ran a semi-legitimate business there for three years without doing anything too suspicious. And since he was a tenant inside of the building, he was given a card that gave him 24-hour access to the building and, more importantly, access to the massive vault below to store his own diamonds in. Photography inside of the building was strictly prohibited, but eventually he managed to create a miniature digital camera that he fixed atop of a pen that poked out of the top of his shirt pocket. This enabled him to walk straight into the vault and take hundreds of photographs of everything inside and outside without ever getting noticed. He would go on to recruit a team of five, including himself, and using these photographs, they were able to perfectly recreate an exact replica of the vault in a warehouse somewhere off-site. The team would practice and practice and perfect their robbery inside of the replica over and over again, until in February 2003, they decided that they were ready to do it for real. 
They chose the night of Saturday the 15th because they knew that a significant portion of the Diamond Center's workers were Jewish, and therefore probably wouldn't stumble into the building in the middle of their robbery on a Saturday. There were no security guards present because they trusted the vault's technological defenses were impregnable. The day before, on the 14th, Notar Bartolo walked into the vault like he usually did to make his deposit, but this time, he brought a can of women's hairspray with him. Without being noticed, he sprayed the motion and heat sensor with a thin layer that would prove to be an ingenious but simple hack that would stop any heat from reaching it the next night. On the night of the 15th, he and his gang used a rented car and drove up across the street at about midnight. Notar Bartolo remained in the car as the getaway driver, while the other four darted out and broke into a rundown office next door. They went from here into a back garden that bordered the back of the Diamond Center. Using a ladder that they had hidden in that garden some time ago, they managed to crawl up to a balcony of the Diamond Center. There was an infrared sensor on this balcony, but the gang used a homemade polyester shield to protect themselves from detection, walked right up to it, and placed the shield in front of it to effectively disable it. Breaking in through a window, the gang scurried in and walked down to the basement where the vault stood before them. Next up, they placed a black bag over the security camera and flipped on the lights. They also brought another simple but ingenious homemade tool with them to deal with something else, a slab of aluminum with double-sided tape on it. They stuck these slabs to the metal plates that were creating the magnetic field over the door, then unscrewed their bolts and removed them. They then taped those plates to the wall without ever breaking the field or setting off an alarm. Using a camera that Notar Bartolo had hidden outside of the door a while ago, they already knew the combination to the dial lock. In a massive security oversight, they also found out that the super unique key that they used to open the other lock was just hanging in a closet right by the door. So they just took that and opened that lock normally. They shut the lights back off and swung open the door, picked the lock to the steel grate, and got in without a single alarm triggering. The hairspray trick seemed to be doing its job, but they didn't take any chances. They put a styrofoam box over it to isolate it further, put black duct tape over the light sensor, another black bag over the interior security camera, and they even managed to reroute the wires in the ceiling to not send any alarms out. And most impressively, they did all of this while in complete darkness. Because because they had memorized the entire vault's layout. With all of the security overcome, they held themselves in a frenzy to over $100 million worth of diamonds, gold, jewelry, and various currencies. With their duffel bags overflowing in loot, they ran out at 5.30 a.m., got back into their car, and drove off without a single shot or an alarm being fired. While the heist itself was squeaky clean, their runaway was not. They had been wearing plastic gloves during the whole heist, and they didn't leave any DNA evidence inside of the vaults. However, they needed to burn those gloves, and on their drive back to Italy, Notar Bartolo pulled off on the side of the road to do it, but his friend allegedly, according to him, got nervous and began throwing stuff carelessly out of the window, including a half-eaten salami sandwich. This sandwich was later discovered, and it provided the DNA evidence that linked Notar Bartolo to the crime, so he was arrested and sentenced to 10 years in prison for his role in the heist. He has never given up the names of any of his fellow robbers even to this day, and most of the $100 million that was stolen is still missing out there, somewhere. That is, unless you believe Notar Bartolo, who claims they only managed to steal $20 million and the reported $100 million is all just an elaborate insurance fraud scheme on the part of the Diamond Center. It's not really clear, but one thing that is, is don't leave behind a half-eaten salami sandwich near the crime scene after you've just stolen millions of dollars. Another thing that's clear is that criminals will go to outrageous lengths to steal some money. Some will pretend to be somebody that they're not for years to gain your trust, while others will simply fish your password and hack into your private bank or email accounts. But thankfully, Dashlane can help protect you against the latter kind of attacks and more. Dashlane helps you create different, super secure, nearly unbreakable passwords for every site that you use, autofills them when you go to log in, and protects them all behind just one super secure password that you need to remember. It's so important to be using different passwords for different sites for your own safety, but nothing makes it easier than not having to remember them all, and that is exactly what Dashlane does. Something this useful is probably pretty expensive, except it's not. It's totally free when you go to dashlane.com rl 
URL or by clicking on the link in the description. Dashlane has some more pretty cool premium features to help protect you online even more, like a VPN, syncing across multiple devices, and dark web monitoring, which you can get for 10% off by using the code RLL when you upgrade. Dashlane has been a great longtime supporter of real life lore, so please do go ahead and check them out next. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week for another brand new video then.